you should interview your dad <laughs> no no it's my complete pleasure to interview you sir ladies and gentlemen shri sunil lulla is a chief executive officer at bark india for over three decades he has been actively involved in building brands and growing businesses startups and turnarounds across media digital music advertising and the fmcg space his ability to create trust value and fairness enables confidence and enduring support from colleagues and industry veterans he has held leadership roles across many companies including balaji telefilms limited grey group india times television network india.com and mtv his early years were spent in sales and soon thereafter with j walter thompson in senior position in india china and taiwan he was a member of the team which helped turn around saregama hmv he kick started and built mtv to a number one position in india at sony with successful programming he rebuilt the channel to a strong number 2 gec he started up india.com subsequently acquired by news corporation star he helped start shape and develop the times television network owned, owned by the times group which comprises of successful and leading television channels et now movies now romedy now times now and zoom its tv channels are present in over 70 countries at gray he initiated and led the turnaround of agency's growth and profitability building a new team new skills robust new clients and a vibrant culture he has been a member of many industry associations and helped drive policy and agenda setting themes for advertising media and entertainment industry and continues to be on the board of companies he is a big advocate for self regulation and upholding the highest industry practice sing standards he is a fellow of the institute of directors thank you so much sir for joining us thank you that's very flattering and i don't deserve it <laughs> you know my first question to you sir how do you feel uh being at the helm of a body which is the only industry currency for a 3.5 billion dollar advertising market i feel privileged uh it's something that i got involved very early at the conception stage because i used to be a member of the television industry i served on the board of uh, ibf and uh, as a consequence i was fortunate enough to be involved in the early nascent stage of the formation of bark uh it comes with a great sense of responsibility because you're building for the industry and bark is nothing else by off and for the industry at the end of the day right it's a measure for the industry so that trading can take place and the derivative of that is obviously to do that trading uh channels get audiences to get those audiences they create programming and leveraging all of that is advertising which the agencies help the the advertisers uh, undertake responsibly so i think it's a it's a it's a very big privilege it's a very big responsibility uh, on my shoulders and my team's shoulders absolutely sir the covid-19 pandemic did bring about a lot of disruption with respect to audience viewership patterns now bark did conduct weekly webinars to update its fraternity on the same what were the key takeaways from those studies do you really feel that a lot has changed beginning april we reached a certain plateau with reference to television viewership and now it has to flatten the curve yeah so the peak that we had has come down right but we are still at a very very high uh, number so to speak i think we are still at 900 billion viewing minutes more than 900 billion viewing minutes it peaked at 1000 uh, a billion viewing minutes a billion billion viewing minutes so that's a 1000 billion viewing minutes and it's come back to the pre covid days now which is a normal curve uh, to kind of expect the reason we saw that phenomenon happen because lockdown was fairly sudden right it happened and you couldn't go to work you couldn't go to school you couldn't uh, go to the marketplace you couldn't do many activities so you were confined at home for the first 14 days or more hmm. and then people also put on them a lot more self imposition of staying at home to be safe hmm. offices and workplaces and factories didn't open up you know farmland also didn't open up as vigorously as it is now hmm. so when they are at home uh, what what do people who are used to being out do when they are at home one recourse of course they've got to help in the house and do other things but one recourse was to look at television so what is traditionally called non prime time from uh, 0600 hours to 1800 hours 6 am to 6 pm basically mm. those hours are the ones that saw a big shift in viewing the big pick up in viewing mm. and it was men women kids it was people who hadn't seen tv in 2020 until then so they had gone out of tv means they weren't watching tv they were doing other things and they came into the they came into the category uh Doordarshan bought back Ramayan, right? Stellar move in my view. Last seen in '86, you won Bond Day Kailash in my view. In that time, yes. uh, I was considerably young, 
Uh, and a lot of people like you had not seen that show at that time, right? And because the family is at home and there are senior members in the household, they said, let's watch this. And guess what? It was the younger people watching this. It was more urban than rural watching Ramayana, right? Became the number one show in the world. There was no original programming because there was no shooting, right? There was no production of television, televised content. So the option was to see news, was to see movies, was to see kids. So news obviously peaked up. News went from a share of 7% of viewing to 21% of, of viewing. And then over a few weeks came to 14 and is now back at the 7 to 8% share of the category. Hmm. Kids watched a lot more television before schools became online. Uh, movies became big. Once original programming started coming back, GECs are back and they're higher up in viewing hmm. than the pre-COVID period. So TV has always been the screen of the household. Hmm. And during COVID, it re-established which is a screen of the household. So unfortunately, April, March, the, in March, there was still a considerable volume of advertising because I guess contracts were being played out, mm. broadcaster con client contracts were being played out, but we had a peak of viewing and we had a trough of advertising. That gap has never been as difficult to view ever before. Yes. Now advertising volume is higher than what it was last year. It is, it is uh, at, a, at a good clip, right? So the, fall, the shortfall that we'll see in this year won't be as bad as we first thought it would be if it had continued that way. So advertising volume is back. Whole host of different brands and categories came in, right? I mean, hand washing products and hygiene care products became something big. Digital products, education, things like that became big. Gaming. The gaming, huge. Digital services became big. So we saw that change over there. Now, of course, you see people buying more cars because they feel it's safer to travel in cars than to take uh, public transport and there is not the pub and the public transport isn't as back as it used to be it's it's still it's still going to take some time for it to be a full service so luckily now i think advertising volumes are back i think volumes value may still be a little behind yes because i think there has been some very smart bargaining that's played out but the interesting part i think is in many categories, not all, but in many categories, and if you go by geography, by states, by languages, mm. the ranking order has changed. Mm. So in news, in many languages, the ranking order changed. Mm. What was one, two, three, four, five is not the same one, two, three, four, five of last year. So that got changed, which means audiences figured out some categories got fairly badly eroded in the sense people moved to some other things. Movies saw a lot, a lot more pickup. But there are no new movie releases. So this it's the erstwhile library, which is really playing out. There aren't any significant uh, movie releases over there. So television is there. I'm quite sure somewhere on the side, digital has picked up fairly significant, mm. right? Because we saw more mobile, more mobile connection, higher data consumption, a lot more digital shows being launched. Uh, people stuck at home. Somebody's got the remote to the TV. Somebody's got the phone and is therefore switching choices over there. And I think because of the quality of programming run by the state crew, that there was a lot of education about hand wash, sanitization, wearing a mask. Uh, it's been opportune. It's played a big role in educating people. Absolutely. The prime minister spoke four times in this year in, in before big moments. His biggest viewing has come in this year. The, the 14th it, April one after the... And even before and after that, right? It's all come in the 2020 period, hmm. right? So all his speeches, they have been keenly listened to by the audiences, right? As to the messages that he has given out has been have been hugely accepted. So IPL had a great season, despite being in a very different time period, right? And a slightly time shifted period, but had a great season, uh, both in terms of viewing as well as in terms of uh, advertising. GECs have picked back the pace, have picked up the pace, hmm. and a lot of new shows uh, have got launched in multiple languages, not just in, in Hindi. News has had some rank order changes and there's been aggressive competition over there. So I think uh, every stakeholder piece has, has, has been able to take advantage of trying to woo the consumer. Absolutely. Now, since we were talking about television viewership and how it you know, reached uh, a peak with Ramayan creating, Ramayan and Mahabharat creating history being the most watched show yeah. on television in the world. We also saw, as you mentioned, sir, that we saw a peak during the pre-COVID and now it is, it is come to uh, the pre it's, back at, level. it's back at normal it's back at the normal level but do you believe that now the threshold for that reach and time spent on television is higher than before or it will go below at as of 
last week that uh, as of this today's results as of today's data release time spent is still higher than the average of pre covid okay, okay. it is still higher marginally so but it is higher reach is also reach is in fact lower than the pre prior period right now that's pre covid usually speaking in november you see a slump in viewing on tv hmm. i think people are getting married they're probably getting married online now right <laughs> so usually speaking in november you know once you come post diwali so starting diwali you start seeing a you start seeing a drop all the way till december and it picks up towards the end of december and starts picking up in january hmm. so if i do a fair comparison likely to likely time period yes it's a little lower uh, the current week is still higher in terms of reach current week is significantly higher in terms of time spent but i think by the time we come to jan this will settle at a level higher than last year okay so the threshold will will increase will increase now if we talk about digital eyeballs you know as the lockdown came as you said that you know tv screen is the screen for the household yes. but actually we saw a massive surge thanks to the lockdown when it comes to your digital viewing now digital yeah. this this is the screen for the individual absolutely the screen for the individual yeah now he can view any other digital product he can view otts i mean digital has a big universe together also catch up tv which is very big absolutely also catch up tv the linear tv that all, and also the linear tv that we see on yeah uh, digital now do you feel that this phenomenon will help digital outgrow tv in this nation soon so i think in 2020 in the united states digital advertising overtakes tv advertising in united states in the united states before 2020 before 2030 that's likely to be the case in india before 2030 okay another few years it will really get really it's already growing at a fast clipping pace naturally it's it's a question of you know where data tariffs play out the quality of service quality of phones what happens to the the economy how people want to access their phones hmm. so and it's not about watching ott content or broadcast content or whatever it's it's screen time hmm. right so i think that there will be a growth in advertising on the digital front now whether it catches up or not but it will be a very big number mm. in the next few years uh it's already galloping ahead mm. tv is not dropping tv is sustaining mm. because there's a very simple reason if you want to reach the mass of india with one campaign mm. tv is still the best medium mm. if you want to reach a household tv is still the best medium mm. right now it will depend on the content that plays out on tv over the next few years if the content plays out in a manner that it continues to attract certain sizable niches mm. for example certain demographics of a certain age either younger or older rural or urban or somewhere in the mega cities it continues to create programming which is different from them then tv will sustain itself mm. naturally so so the content of tv has to change mm. to take the battle of digital on mm. television has to survive the ott search but naturally that for that the content not has to just, has to grab the eyeball see for ott to do, look at this this way there are thousands of hours of programming put on tv every day hmm. right monday to saturday the show runs seven days a week 52 weeks a year it starts at 6 in the evening ends at 12 in the night original programming right by and large few hours here and there in different languages that's a lot of storytelling that capacity does not exist today in digital content so youtube yes youtube is an ocean and you can get many things in that ocean over there right but as far as curated content which attracts audiences which will get premium on advertising where you know the profile of people who are watching a particular content that will take time to grow that factory but there will be a mahabharat between tv and ott that is for sure that is for sure there will be a mahabharat between tv and ott that is for sure Now sir you know you have been an industry veteran and recently the government has brought the digital entertainment and news under its purview this sector which was purely riding on self regulation now has a watchdog kind of a censorship surely this signals that a change in content strategy will follow will this regulation influence the digital viewership pattern habits because since see, this is an individual screen as you just mentioned i like to watch that content which i want to watch in my own confines now if that strategy changes and due to let's say censorship it is now in line or little bit in line up to television then is my individual viewing habit going to change 
See, a lot of the content that's being watched on digital is still generic. What does generic mean? It means the kind of videos you will find that people put up, say, on YouTube, how to make dal, as an example, right? Uh, how to tie a tie knot. I failed at learning to tie one. So how to tie a tie knot, right? You will find that that still hosts a lot of attention on YouTube. In terms of digital curated content, the volume that is there right now is still very small. And it appeals to a certain section of the society. It doesn't appeal to everybody. Sure. The subscription content, not everybody can is willing to pay that subscription price, okay? And will not be able to sustain it. Cable is still a cable or DTH is still a more sustainable, cheaper option. Sure. So we need to understand that first, before we get to what regulation can do, the what's the difference between the two screens? A screen for the household means India is a household demography. Right, that's how we live. Largely speaking, we are, we are more than one person in a home. Perhaps we are four as a as a safer projection. And somewhere there is two and three, and then there's even twenty five if necessary. But we are a, a household in terms of our cultural value. So we will see certain things on TV which are acceptable to all of us. Yeah. Right? Personally, you may be able to handle a lot more slang. And you may be able to handle a lot more graphic violence, or you might like ghost stories, which will frighten little kids away, right? So that you may watch on your mobile phone or on your personal hand device. Now, the storytelling for the individual has to be different from the storytelling of the screen of, of the household. Absolutely. Right? So if the households are still there and they continue to watch uh, TV and they continue to get programming that they want to watch on TV, then I think. Both can coexist. I actually believe both will coexist. We still have approximately close to 100 million homes still to get a TV set. Yes. So that gap has to be bridged. We have many people yet to get, a, many hundreds of millions yet to get a smartphone. Hmm. Right? And the ability to pay for it. Hmm. And I'm quite sure there's an impact of the advertising which changes while the targeting benefit is there on a single screen. On TV, the impact of a campaign, which is of a larger size, is certainly different from the impact of a campaign on a smaller size. That's just visual optics, nothing else to it. I'm sure there's enough measurement science data to prove that it doesn't matter. But, but the fact is that you watch TV together, you have a conversation, you watch it with somebody else. Your personal screen is your personal screen. Sure. Now, a lot of, you know, uh, since you were speaking about television and kind of change in viewership, uh, that uh, the data witnessed pre-COVID, post-COVID, during the COVID, a lot of niche channels such as English entertainment, infotainment, they saw their last signal beam due to many factors. It could be NTO and then the pandemic being like the last nail in the coffin. Do you feel that these genres were any which way is dying a slow death and it was about time for them? You know, so there was many, some of the genres were sitting on libraries, which were sitting outside the country, largely in the United States, right? And these libraries needed to service the growing ocean of the content, the, the digital content growing in the Western part of the world, mm. right? And they had to fulfill those contractual needs. So they were started pulling off their best movies from mm. running on TV. So they started going away. When they started going away, there wasn't much differentiated content to catch. And for those people, so English was is a sliver of audience. So less than 1% of India watches total English programming. Mm. news, entertainment, etc. It's really a small number in that sense. It may be quote unquote an affluent number, but it's a small number. Mm. And they started watching, they got much of the content on other mediums. So they started watching on other mediums. So mm. I think if those channels have to succeed in India, they have to rethink their strategy. Mm. Because most of these contents, you that, that's available on your various OTT platforms. Yeah, possibly. Mm. So if you're not going to get the price in subscription and you're mm. going to be competing hard on advertising and you still got a large bill to pay for license fees, then you just decide where you want to put your money. Absolutely. And many of these people who have English channels have their own OTT play directly or indirectly. Yes. So it's a matter of refocusing the investment. Naturally. Uh, so, yes, sir, a lot has been said about the sample size homes being too minuscule to measure the viewership taste of a vast nation like India. Like, we have currently 200 million uh, cable and satellite, uh, including terrestrial homes, and less than 100,000 boxes to measure it. When do you feel that this will this question will really be answered? 
I'll answer it just now. A drop of blood gives you your whole DNA. I don't need to pull five liters of blood out of your body. It's a sample, right? So what is a sample? A sample is a representation of the universe. It's supposed to be a projected estimate of how the universe behaves. And that's exactly what this is. It's a sample. It's one of the largest samples in the world. It's a sample that is built taking into consideration all the key factors that influence viewing. It's a sample that has been satisfied by enough audit firms, enough statistical institutes, both Indian and international. At the end of the day, you want to do a sample which is say a million homes instead of 50,000 homes. Somebody has to pay for it, mm. right? We are a stakeholder body. Our stakeholders are not interested in paying for it. Mm. There may be individuals who have a different opinion, but the stakeholder bodies aren't interested in paying for a larger sample because it does not create for better return on the economics. Mm. There is a percentage that you pay for measurement of the investment you make in your business. Mm. So an advertiser advertises, say five or 10 crores on TV, will pay only so much as a fee to the media agency or for the measurement of its advertising. A broadcaster whose job is to gain audiences of a certain kind and then monetize those audiences will pay only so much for measurement. And what is the benefit of that? So the long tail channels, the channels with smaller viewing, which may have lower presence in any of the state samples, they need to appreciate this variability in their, in their data. Mm -hmm. And if they take a longer cut, they'll be able to express their data with more confidence. What has happened is this manic hyper competition that I am bigger on Wednesday and you are bigger on Thursday. Mm. I'm bigger at 8 p.m. and you are bigger at 9 p.m. Who started this? And why was this started? Advertisers don't behave like this. In this time period, when we are not releasing individual news channel data, mm. the volumes of advertising on news has only grown up, has only gone up, not grown up, has only gone up. Mm. It's not gone down. Mm. So advertisers are smart enough to know what channels to choose, what set of data to use, and the agencies who are their partners are extremely smart in making these choices. Mm -hmm. So we kind of you know, discount their smartness, and we should not. So I believe the sample size we have today is right. Can we increase the sample size 100%? Let somebody pay for it. 100% mm -hmm. we can increase, let somebody pay for it and understand the benefits of it. If, we, if the stakeholders aren't going to pay for it, mm. there is no point getting on the rooftop and beating your chest. Absolutely. So it's it's about a choice which the stakeholders have met. Um, Absolutely. And investment, probably the investment is the only thing that is stopping from addressing this issue. And this no. is not a concern at all. As you rightly said, you know, if there's a blood test done, they don't take entire blood. It's just a little sample. See, if I take certain categories, which are very small, less than even 1%, to get more stability on the data, the sample has to go from 50,000 homes to 300,000 homes, from 50,000 to 3 lakhs, six-fold increase. Mm. What it will do is it will reduce the variability by half. The rating will not go up because there are only so many people watching that genre. We need to recognize that Hindi, Tamil, Bengali, Marathi, Telugu, Malayalam, will be more watched than other languages in this country. And Marathi will be more watched than other languages in this country. Mm. Urdu is really small. Gujarati is really small. English is really small. So when we recognize this, we will understand that this is the value of, of the product over there. And as a country over the last few years, we have moved a lot from being this, you know, belief in English to being belief in multiple languages going downstream and seeing what people watch in across India, in small towns and small villages. Absolutely. And English is not the medium of comfort. Hmm. True. Now, since you mentioned about news channels and the kind of, you know, advertising that they engaged into regarding I'm big at 8, I'm big at 9 p.m. Saying, saying it cheekily, okay? So my due apologies to all my <laughs> colleagues <laughs> in the no, no, industry. It's, it's a very generic... Uh, uh, just saying it with, uh, with due apologies and, and cheekily, right? That I understand that you need to, you need to propagate your, you know, uh, your audiences that you have. But if you slice and dice the data, then you will pay for slicing and dicing the data too. 
Absolutely. Now, do you feel that you know the news business, which makes headlines, was in the news itself, was in the headlines itself? Do you feel that a certain section of news media pushed themselves too far with content? I mean, just with relating to content. I, I have no comment to make. It's not my job. It's not my duty. And even as an individual, I do not judge a channel by what they say. This is a democracy. Let people say what they feel like saying. True. See, there is a there are some very very evolved self guideline rules. I've seen it. I've sat on the NBSA. I've been in the NBA. I've been in the IBF, and I've seen this. The NBSA and BCC were created as instruments hmm. to navigate and guide the content creators in understanding the social fabric better. Hmm. Right now, if you push it, then something will happen. It is better to self regulate than to be regulated. Self-regulation is better. See, if you if you eat continuously and do not exercise and stay in a spot, you will become overweight. Mm. You will become obese. You will end up with diseases. Mm. If you want to enjoy life, exercise a lot more. Run forty-two kilometers, mm. like me, and enjoy eating good food, and enjoy eating good food, and live healthily. But make the effort, right? Mm. So self-regulation is significantly better than being regulated. the government steps in to regulate when you lose sight of the basic responsibility of self regulation so they allow you to self regulate very clearly so follow the discipline if you don't then you will get a rap on your knuckles absolutely uh so there has been a huge debate going on since decades you know that you know our media is too advertising dependent if you look at the west they rely on subscription as their main source of revenue your revenue as we know that is directly proportional to the rating points and rating points is directly proportional to your content which according to few has led to the kind of regressive content that we see today do you feel that our industry the indian media and entertainment industry would ever be able to strike a fine balance between this that we are just too advertising dependent and subscription we just don't pay heed to so i'd like to respond to the last part of your question first one is uh, let's not blame measurement for the nature of content we do everybody has a moral compass everybody has a code everybody has a responsibility of respect to the consumer so please pay, please put out the content that you believe your consumers can openly enjoy if tv even if it is on digital mm. right there is a cultural as well as a social fab fabric within which we operate and a legal framework all of it operate within that why do you want to operate outside of that there should be no reason to operate outside that if you are a commercial business mm. right which wants public acceptance so one is operate within that so create the content that you think people are going to get viewed there are too many channels sometimes in some categories competing for attention there is a degree of sameness in some of the things that are happening and they need to introspect if they want to change or they want to continue that pathway the question of subscription india has never been a subscription market you take united states and take india since you said it let's look at newspaper mm. times of india at 10 rupees will give you times of india plus two more publications bombay times and others mumbai mirror economy time what our depa maharashtra time depending on what i in worked over there so i know the packaging okay i am not trying to advertise them <laughs> but if you look at it if you look at it you it comes in your house mm. right how is a newspaper read in a home it is open it's a broadsheet it is shared in the us people picked up the newspaper either it came to the home as subscription or that picture of a newsstand and they read it on the way to work right very big difference yeah. very big difference and when the newspaper left behind the other members of the house read it so if you see a typical indian family the pages of the paper are, are distributed over the home everybody reading their own page and you know that was the excitement of of the paper right so and that is at a reasonable price is 10 bucks today it should be 5 bucks it should be 2 bucks once upon a time even less than a rupee if i if i remember correctly so that's where the basis of the subscription business came in cable when it came into the country was really cheap continues to be very cheap at that price you need millions of consumers to be profitable to use only cable as a business and because we have a price tariff regime right and we can debate whether that is cheap or expensive or it's fair but the point is we have a price regime we work within the tariff order of the price regime hmm. price is regulated to that extent and the cable system does not always openly state what its numbers are i mean that's the no common fight between broadcasters and cable owners right or 
DPO, right? There's a common fight over there. So you're not, very few channels are gonna make sufficient money on subscription alone. And it's not even direct subscription. Very often it's through a DPO. Mm. It's not direct. So if you subscribe for a Netflix, you're the direct subscriber. But when you're buying Tata Sky, you're buying Tata Sky and you're getting maybe 200 channels on it, depending on what package you took. Mm. 100 channels, 200, 300 channels on it, depending on what package you took, right? Mm. So the broadcasters of those channels don't know who you are. It's coming through a via medium. Mm. So advertising has always been something in India which is seen as what stimulates demand. Mm. And I think it plays a very important role in the Indian economy. America, 3% of GDP. Advertising is 3% of GDP. In India, it's less than half. I think it's 0.4 now, maybe less. In COVID time, got to come to 0 or 0 0.3 back again. It used to be 0 0.3. So it's it's still got a long way to go. A developed economy has a 1% ratio between advertising and GDP. So we have headroom to grow, right? And advertising does influence people. And we are a market where both will exist. We will have subscription-based services. It will not go to 100 million people or 200 million people. It may go to 25 million people. And we will have a, a market where there will be people who will watch things with ads. Because for many people, it's the, the cost of subscription is not so great. For the masses, for the 75% of India, it is the only way to inform, entertain, and educate. Absolutely. And to share, and to share, very important. The, as you can say, now, the, the idiot box lying in their house is the only way that they can entertain themselves. Well, you know, there are different things. In a, in a time period where you don't have movies releasing, you can see the movie star on a dance show or a music show, yeah. right? Yeah. Where you don't have, uh, uh, where you need information on COVID, where was it coming from? The news channels. Every single day, they will bring you an expert from somewhere in the world. They will bring you news and reports of what is going on. So... I think we need to ourselves as custodians of the industry respect what the industry produces. Absolutely. So there will be a time where you know India will also see a good culmination between advertising and subscription. But yes, advertising will be dominant when it comes I to. The, I think because many broadcasters in India are also players in the digital stream, they may have two different services. Hmm. True. So there are some independent businesses which are digital players, which we all know. Right? They are fairly big and powerful globally, and they will get big in India too. But there will be two different services. There will be two different services. I, in digital media, you have an AWARD and you have an SWARD. So you have an advertising-driven service and then you yeah. have a subscription. Yeah. Subscription okay. alone on TV is very, very hard to do. It's very, very hard. So you need advertising in order to make a, a business model work. No, because when that screen is on, everybody is watching. No? So why don't you monetize it smartly? Hmm. Monetize it smartly, you know. Promote what needs to be promoted. In your household, you know, a new car, uh, a new destination when we can travel with more liberation, a new food item can be introduced to you via advertising on whichever medium, on whichever channels you're watching your home. Hmm. Right? So I think advertising will continue to play a very, very strong role. It's a part of building the Indian economy. If there's a dream to build and a goal to build a five trillion economy, advertising will play a very pivotal role in creating consumption and demand. Let's understand that. That's right. So, so advertising if you think the country is headed there and you're backing that bet, mm -hmm. then you must understand that advertising is one of the levers which is going to get to the bet. Absolutely. So advertising is one of the very important levers that will help, you know, uh, steer up an economy to a $5 trillion economy. Yeah, it's consumption, right? It will increase consumption, right? Every day is not going to be like 2020. No. Naturally. Right? Yeah, we'll yeah, take some time perfect. to come out of it. We'll come out of it and, you know, no, we'll there are that, you know what uh, 1920 was, the entire m &E sector together, probably 2021, the financial year will be like a 15 to 20% dip, but then the base will not be this. Come 21, 22, and you will have the same level of 1920. That's what's being estimated also. So we can s see the sheer power of it. Absolutely. You'll see growth. Absolutely. Uh, before we part ways, sir, any last thoughts on the fact that the government has recently formed a committee uh, to give their suggestions on the entire rating measurement systems? We welcome it. Uh, 2008 is when the Amit Mitra committee was formed. Mm -hmm. 12 years later, it is good to do a review. It is good to get critique. 
there are very nice people who are there on the committee. They are very knowledgeable. They've got a fundamental essence of statistics and science in play. Uh, I'm quite sure that whatever recommendations they make and feedback we get from them, we will receive very positively and warmly. And we look forward to implementing what is possible to implement. This company is run off for and by our stakeholders, the advertisers, the agencies, and the broadcasters, right? Yeah. So we are in it together. Absolutely. Right? We are in it together to build the $5, $5 trillion dream. We are in together to create consumption demand. And if we have to measure what we do and we have to look at more things or do uh, do more processes or you know structure things differently, I'm sure our board will be very open to receive these recommendations. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us this afternoon on Visionary Talks by Governance Now. It was a complete pleasure hosting you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for also joining us. Vichri Sunil Lullaji. Thank you so much, thank sir. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.